This show is made possible by Web Central, creators of beautifully effective websites and online marketing solutions for small businesses, just like yours. Gotta love that. Grab an exclusive listener deal over at webcentral.com.au forward slash Timbo. And key person of influence also make this show possible. They're a 40-week accelerator program designed to make you more visible, more valuable, and more connected in your industry. Who doesn't want a bit of that? You can grab a free hard copy of their New York Times bestseller over at keypersonofinfluence.com forward slash, you guessed it, Timbo. Being successful is a good thing, right? But what about being significant? Does being significant smash being successful out of the park? Today's guest thinks so, and he's on an absolute mission to achieve it. Well, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show, where successful small business owners share their souls. To take your marketing straight to the lead, now here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back to another episode of Australia's number one marketing show. I'm your host, Tim Bo Reed. You infinitely more importantly, are a motivated business owner and you are ready to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful, beautiful business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. That's what we do around here. That's what we do around here today. That's what we did around here last week. And in fact, that's what we've been doing around here for over seven years. So thanks for joining us. Big show today. Now, I know I said last week we were going to be joined by a fellow who's got a business that's changing the way we shop for clothes. But that's going to have to wait until next week. Why? Because I have a timely interview that I want to share with you, being the start of November. It's with Adam Garone, one of the co-founders of arguably Australia's most well-known men's health charity, Movember. Uh, You heard of that? I hope so pretty amazing. He joins us to explain why and how he wants to go from being successful to significant. I also share another low-cost marketing idea for you to implement immediately after the show on our new segment we lovingly call What Have You Got to Lose? And we revisit a past episode in which we go behind the scenes of a wonderful business called Spell and the Gypsy Collective. You guessed it, as per usual. There is marketing, G-O-L-D, dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Coming up after our chat with today's guest, I share how to create an insanely simple and effective product or service demonstration video. I think you're going to love that. But first, Adam Garone. He is the co-founder and chief Mobro of the Movember Foundation. That is Movember with an M for Mary, the only charity tackling men's health on a global scale. In case you've been under, in case you've been living under a rock and are unaware of Movember and how it works, well, it simply asks blokes to get sponsored to grow a mo during the month of November, with all the money raised going to fund research into men's health. Uh, Adam and the team have also found a way for women to get involved, which he shares during this chat. Now, how's this for a scoreboard? Since starting the foundation in 2003, Movember has had over 5 million people taking part. They've raised more than $770 million. They're in 21 countries and have funded over 1,200 men's health programs. Pretty amazing stats, hey? Now, this is a great chat. It applies to absolutely any business owner or marketer out there, including you. We cover plenty of ground. Why Adam is keen to shift from success to significance, how Movember is working hard to stay relevant in a pretty competitive marketplace, and who isn't in a competitive marketplace, by the way, Uh, the importance of user-generated content, and he's got a great idea that he shares about how he's going to get barbers to do his marketing. Genius, really. I started off by asking Adam, what is the deep-seated personal reason why he does what he does? 
There is. There is. Um, I've always been passionate about um, serving. Uh, initially, that was to the country. I was an officer in the Australian Army uh, huh. and then got out and then um, was in the corporate world for a bit and then Movember popped up and uh, for the last 13 years I've lived a life of service um, to men's health and prostate testicular cancer and suicide prevention. So there's definitely something wired within me um, that is about giving back and, and service. And it becomes exceptionally fulfilling when you, and this happens all the time now on a daily basis, um, get emails, phone calls, messages from people whose lives you've saved and, and lives that you have changed. What, what is it about the service thing? It's so rewarding, I think, in the mm. end. I think, I, I think a lot about the difference between being successful and being significant. Mm. Um, certainly the first half of my adult life, which is not dissimilar to a lot of others, is a, well, was about being successful in academics, in sports, and then in, in business, and more titles, more money, and, mm-hmm. and that materialises in symbols of your success and gives you moments of happiness. But I think for a lot of people, uh, there becomes a point in their life that you start to think about your legacy and think about hopefully rocking back on a chair in, at the ripe old age of 90 years and thinking about what was it that you did in your life that has left a legacy and and for me that's all about being significant and supporting others that um, are less fortunate than yourself and and that brings absolute fulfillment and this deep sense of of pride and happiness and uh there's no better motivator and and for me life is about being happy (laughs) hallelujah to that can you be significant uh do you have to be successful before you can be significant it's, that is an interesting question, which I've thought about um, a bit. I, I think it helps, certainly, that you've had an element of success, um, that you have some sort of platform. But there's a bunch of other examples where there, there were people that um, have left led a life of, of significance without necessarily being successful beforehand. I mean, when the four of us started Movember, we were just four average Aussie guys and chipping away, um, inspired to do something in our community and, and something for men's health. So we had an element of success, but we weren't wealthy. We weren't um, famous. Um, we just got together and created this movement. Example of when you say there are examples of people who have, who have gone straight to being significant, are you talking like, is that like a Mother Teresa example? Yeah, or? They're, they're the examples that immediately pop to my mind, yeah, that mm. – um, and, you know, three of the four co-founders, we went to a Catholic boys' school and and certainly here in Melbourne, um, Whitefriars College, and, and we had a number of fathers and brothers that teached us and it was a wonderful education. And, and to see the life of service that, that they led certainly went on to inspire uh, me and I know some of the other co-founders that went there as well. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're the immediate examples where mm-hmm. someone just, you know, devotes their life to... to you know, something greater than themselves, and whether that's a religion or another particular cause. So I wouldn't say you would need or do need to be successful before, mm. you know, focusing on being significant. It probably takes more courage to be going straight into being significant uh, mm. because success makes being significant, gives you breathing space, I'm mm, guessing, to be does. significant. When did you, at what point then in the Movember journey, were you sitting around going, We've got some pretty good success. You know, we've raised a lot of dough. We're in a lot of countries. We've helped a lot of causes. Mm. What Can you think? take us back to the time when you've gone, we have to move on from success? Yeah, it was um, It was at the point that we'd raised cumulatively $100 million. So just winding the clock back here, I would have said that was 2000 and. Nine. Um, we've raised, to put it into perspective, we've raised seven hundred and seventy million dollars now. Nuts. Well um, done. So at the hundred million dollar mark, we sat back and thought, um, "That's great. Um, we're in twenty one countries, and and we measured um, the organisation by success based metrics. So it was how many people participated each year, how much did they raised, how many countries we were in, yeah. and we stood back and was okay. Well, hundred million dollars." an amazing amount of money, what impact have we had here? Have we actually moved the dial? Are less men dying from 
prostate cancer and testicular cancer are less men taking their life. How, how do we? How do you measure that? And so we went to all our partners at the time that we were were funding, and it was really interesting. Um, we put a lot of pressure on them. We do do that even more so now, to not only just show us where the money went, but to show us how are they measuring impact and are we actually moving the dial. Uh-huh. What, that changed our thinking. So, yes, you need success. We, we need people signing up. We need people making donations and fundraising. But the true measure here is are we having a significant impact um, because otherwise you're just feeding the charity beast. And there's a number of organisations, and I won't name them, both in the for-profit and and not-for-profit, but end up just becoming self-serving. And, you know, where our sort of renegade approach to to fundraising and the way we shook up the charity industry is what we're doing with research and it's what we're doing with these support programs. We hold these researchers to unbelievable levels of accountability and they don't necessarily like it because they're not used to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so can I challenge you on that? I may well have missed it, but having mm-hmm. a look at Movember online, you've got a wonderful leaderboard section of your website where you talk about funds raised, Mo Bros and Mo Sisters uh, in numbers, number of donations, uh, countries, individual uh-huh. leaderboards, network leaderboards. I mean, it goes <laughs> on and on. Um, these are all success um, in, in I, I think, these are all success criteria. So yeah. how are you going to or, or do you even shout significance from the mountaintop or do you just let that play out organically? Yeah, it, it's really good observation. And what, what we've realised um, over time is, you know, the, the term gamification is used a lot now and it's it's basically scoreboards, right? And Do you want to just explain that? Because I haven't done an episode on that and I think it's a fascinating concept. Yeah, so basically um, it's been around forever, but um, the new way people describe it is you call it gamification. Mm. So what we build into the fundraising campaign each year are these elements that make it more like a game. So we have a leaderboard for individuals. We have a leaderboard for people uh, at college or university. We have a leaderboard for corporate teams. We have leaderboards by country, and that engenders competition, and competition will create, um, in, in our case, more people sign up and more money to be raised. So you're right. Th- th- those things absolutely there are more around success-based mm-hmm. metrics that you would expect in a game of, of football. And that has dramatically driven up levels of engagement and ultimately has enabled us to, to raise significantly more money each year. No doubt. The this, this significance part comes in really on the other side of the campaign where our programs team are working around going, well, how are we going to use this money? What programs are we going to invest in? How are we going to measure the impact? And it's outside of the campaign that that we've spent a lot of time on measuring our significance and reporting that back to to the community. But when you're in the thick thick of the campaign, it's all about, you know, the banter, the office banter. I've I've raised 100 bucks. How much have you raised? So so is the ideal headline post-campaign, Adam, um, and I'm being a little bit facetious here, but Movember cures cancer? Yeah, yeah, that that and that, that's not an unrealistic headline. And it won't be after this campaign, um, but we're getting close, and we're really close with testicular cancer. And the survival rate for that is ninety five percent. Can you draw? A, is there a relatively straight line between starting Movember back in two thousand and three and becoming and ninety five percent curing testicular cancer? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the rates, the survival rates of both um, prostate and testicular cancer have gone up significantly. And in part, and I'm, I'm not going to claim hmm. this is all us because it's it really is a community that's come together to, to um, of course. you know, to challenge this. But um, what was happening before Movember, there was no money going to testicular cancer. There was very little money going into prostate cancer. And we put both of those diseases on the map. So, and with that, came this amazing amount of financial capital. Now, if you were a young cancer researcher, PhD, uh, passionate about cancer, ultimately you get to a stage in your research career that you're going to go, well, I need to get paid, Hmm. so I'm going to go where the money is, skin cancer, breast cancer, lung cancer. 
There was no money in testicular cancer. There and all of a sudden that PhD right. goes, oh, hang on, there's some, some group of blokes calling themselves Movember who are throwing yes. a whole lot of dough towards this. Correct. So what came problem. first was a financial capital. Now we've got this amazing human capital coming in. I was in Southern California just last week at a conference for prostate cancer and, and the, the amount of young people that are coming into this field, coming at it from a really different angle. And what's been ab- amazing for us is that we're the only cancer charity in the world, and I don't say that lightly, we've researched this extensively, mm. that's been able to unite the researchers focused on these diseases. Because we're in 21 countries, because we're the major funder, we've been able to cl- create global strategies, unite these people that, that um, we're, we're competing against each other for funding, and we've brought them to, and this has been over the last six years, and we're funding them to work together. And the rate at which we're now accelerating um, progress is phenomenal. So just to go back to testicular cancer, survival rate 95%, but still in one in 20 cases, these young men, the cancer comes back, they become resistant to treatment. Because of Movember, we've resurrected a clinical trial um, that is now global. We brought together a number of teams to figure out why is it these men become resistant and how can we create a new course of drugs, a new type of drugs to, to beat the cancer. So I'm confident within five to ten years we'll have effectively cured that disease and no man should die from it. It's insane, mate. I've got to but ask, how, how does that make you feel? Well, that's a significant part, right? You know, yeah. it's, you, you know, I get, oh, you're the Movember guy, you're the moustache guy. Yeah, yeah. But it's really nice to be known as, well, you're the guy that helped cure testicular cancer. Um, and that's, that would be, you know, an amazing outcome. So, so maybe on the tombstone, just a, a kind of cool-looking <laughs> Mo illustration, but but something more kind of significant uh, as an epitaph. Tell yeah. me, tell me, hey, listeners. I'm, I'm by the way, I'm talking to Adam Garone, who was one of the co-founders of the Movember movement that started in 2003, about to head into a 13th campaign uh, this November, which started only yesterday. Tell me, um, let, let's talk uh, significance. And relevance, because one of the things that fascinates me, or I'm, is, is about Movember, is how do you stay relevant? When you started back in two thousand and three, I don't know. Were there many months named after causes? Did we have <laughs> Daffodil Day? Did we have Are You Okay Day? Now you're operating in an insanely competitive marketplace. Uh, yeah. How do you get your head above the trench? <laughs> yeah, there, I mean, there was daffodil, a Daffodil Day for sure when we started, but there was no month renamed, and now there's Stoptober, Dry there, July. There was Rocktober, 3XY, you know, Actually, back then. <laughs> that was part of the inspiration. Wow. Was, you know, Rocktober, what do we do next? Let's do Movember. Love it. The other thing that we did was we were really back in the day in 2004, we were we were totally online. We were totally digital back then. It was the only way you could sign up and, and make a donation. Now, that's commonplace now, but we pioneered that. Um, we also pioneered just shaking up charity and making it super fun. And, and, that, and That's that interesting. Was great. And we, we rode that wave for a long time. And, and part of our... Part of our um, mantra and motivation back in the day was to shake up charity and create a new generation of philanthropists. So back in back when we started this, there was no such thing as a social entrepreneur. Um, now you can do degrees and masters degrees in social <laughs> entrepreneurship. And you, you a lecturer? Yeah, I, I I have been a guest lecturer. You're a guest lecturer, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Tell me about the super uh, super fun. That's interesting. That's disruptive. Big word these days in business and marketing. Everything's disruptive. Uber's disruptive. Facebook's right. disruptive. Um, how did you make charity super fun? Was it simply by adopting a month and having a fun name, or was it deeper than that? Yeah, it was a combination of a lot of things. Um, you know, it, it was certainly all of that. Um, but, you know, the, the concept of getting men to grow a moustache for charity is, is it, should, it doesn't make sense. It, should, it shouldn't and, work, really. It shouldn't work, yeah. And, you know, I often say to people, it's like, if, if we can get to Movember to work on the scale that we have, no matter what your dream is, no matter what feedback you're getting, um, pursue it. If you truly believe in, and I often think about this, and the journey, one of the success factors behind us was our resilience. 
and, and grit and determination. Mm. And we absolutely believed in what we could achieve. Um, we were super passionate about it because not only were we getting rejected and we were getting laughed at because it's just like, that, that's a ridiculous idea. What, how could that possibly work? And, and then people started ignoring us and then we knew we were onto something. How? H- hang on, because most business owners listening to that and, and others working for, for not-for-profits would just go, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, you're right. Right. Well, th- there, was, there was that fundamental belief uh, and we created this crystal clear picture of here's what we could create. We could create the biggest charity event in Australia and then the globe for men. And the mechanic behind growing moustache is no different to doing a 10K run for breast cancer. You make a commitment to do a 10K run. We've often been called the laziest charity event in the world where you do less to do, to do more. Mm-hmm. Um, but very <laughs> early on, 2004, there were some really strong indicators and that gave us ultimate confidence. So in 2004, our first fundraising year, we had 450 guys signed up and we raised $54,000. And that was the single biggest donation the Prostate Cancer Foundation had ever yeah. received. And the fundamentals were there were 450 people. Each of those guys raised about $110. They had conversations and we got some media. Now we have, you know, six, 700,000 guys participate each year supported by the women and they raise about $150 each So that, and, and have conversations that we get media. So those basic metrics, those basic business fundamentals were there right from the start and what we've done over time is is amplify those and, and grow and I always think about because I always get asked how do you how do you how do you build your community how did and I always go back to the 450 people if you can't get 450 people to come into your store or buy your product it doesn't get any easier when you're trying to get a thousand or ten thousand or a hundred thousand you've got mm-hmm. to come back to who you true 450 true passionate supporters, fans Hmm. that are going to buy your product and are stoked on it and are talking about it and go, hey, this is good coffee, this is Hmm. a good T-shirt, this is a good campaign or whatever it is. I'm sure there's a book by some one of those business gurus about, isn't it 100 people? Uh, A a thousand true fans. A thousand uh, true fans. Tim Ferriss talks about it a lot over in in the US. And, and, you know, I've, I've... you know, I listen to his podcast as well, and I, I think about this a lot. And for us, it was 450 true fans. Yeah, right. Well, that's easier. That's more achievable. Back to relevance, Adam. So mm-hmm. because I, I'm still looking at it, and, you know, even as you're talking, I've just written down uh, pink, envious, <laughs> which means <laughs> are you, you know, these breast cancer guys and girls. I mean, that is an incredible story. Everything seems to be pink. I'm over things that are pink, Right. right? Yeah. Um, how do you stay relevant? How do you get noticed? Yeah, and that is something we focus on a lot because this is a 13th campaign and, and then we go, well, what's new? And over time and every year we, we, we treat the Movember brand like a, a lifestyle brand, like a fashion brand. So each hmm. year the brand looks different. Each, each season the brand looks different. So we invest in that. Over time we've added the different causes, prostate, then testicular cancer, then suicide prevention. Um, and what we've had to do, and we, we didn't realise at the time, but the 2012 was this perfect storm. You know, that was when really the Mo tipped over the edge and, and became a true movement. But we were built on the fashion trend mm-hmm. and a fashion trend that had passed. And fashion trends always come and go. So what happened in 2013 is grooming trends changed again. In comes the hipster. Right. We, we, we literally <laughs> put the moustache back on face of fashion. And then what those moustaches spurred on was beards. Mm-hmm. And... You know, beards are still on trend, as is as is you know just general facial hair. So we had to roll with that, and um, and now what we've done, and it's been quite challenging, uh, is add other pathways with which the community can fundraise. So it, it, it sounds like your greatest challenge is this one of relevance. I'm guessing each year having to kind of figure out what why are people going to take. You've got your core group, and it's a big community. Mm. Like uh, it's, it's millions, it's millions, a, it's millions. So it's not as if you're kind of you're always operating off a very high base to start with. But mm. bringing in those new ones and um, and nurturing them and and staying relevant is really interesting. What's what's the best marketing? Uh, and you're not, not allowed to say word of mouth because I don't mm. believe word of mouth is marketing. I think it's the result of great marketing or great product. Yeah, um, it's a great product, yeah. What, what's the best marketing effort 
you've ever done where you've just gone, oh, geez, that had an impact? Yeah, that, that you know, it's interesting. Um, I've always said there's no silver bullet <laughs> at Movember. It's a combination of uh, every element of the marketing mix and every element of the organisation working in sync. Um, yeah, you know, I could pick out a couple of, you know, marketing initiatives that went really, really well. I don't think they, um, you know, were define the success of the particular campaign. Um, but, you know, relevance is a, is a huge one for every product and mm-hmm. everyone, no matter what it is, is going to go through a life cycle. Um, early adopters, um, you know, it becomes more mainstream, then you go into maintenance. And then, so what, one thing that we added on were st- two other p- pathways to participate, which is move. Um, so for the first four letters of November, move. So it's about creating a physical challenge over the course of the month. So that was the first time we were able to go to the women who love the men in their lives and go, hey, we, for the first time ever, we've got a, a true way you can participate over the course of the month. And oh, that yeah. was to, to you know, create yeah, nice. your own physical challenge. And the move way we talked about, yeah, yeah. So move for November. And the way we tied that back to men's health was getting the women to challenge the men in their life to match their move. And the best thing we can do for our health is to move. So mm-hmm. it tied perfectly back into the issue that we were trying to face. So how does that show itself? If a woman uh, wants to become part of the Mo- Movember movement, she has to say, what, she's going to move 10,000 steps a day or she's going to do something? Correct. Yeah, it okay. could be you know, whatever they're into, they're swimming, running, swimming, um, and then get the men in their life to match their move. And we've also got um, another initiative around hosting an event, hosting a fundraising event for Movember. And we always want that to be in true Movember spirits, so whether it's a ping pong tournament or a, a, a dinner or whatever it is, um, to bring people together, have a conversation and, and raise a little bit of money. Speaking, so, speaking of women, I saw my dear old 90-year-old mum on the weekend and mm-hmm. I said to her, I'm interviewing you. Now, she's got a bit of a mo going. Uh, doesn't, <laughs> doesn't mean do. <laughs> but I asked her whether she'd sign up. She, she said no, uh, but I'm going to keep working at it. Uh, it's a slow grow mo. <laughs> <laughs> Might be able to get a little cash donation off of it. <laughs> yeah, correct, correct. Tell me, um, it, it, it's, a, it's a great cause and it continues to do wonderful things. What about user-generated content? Because I, I, I would imagine... As a marketing kind, marketing kind of initiative, a lot of your tribe are doing the work for you, mm-hmm. and not word of mouth, but actually creating content. Are they that they're sharing or? Yeah, absolutely. It's a big part of our success and the, the way we've grown. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was it, it was about inspiring our community to take and own our brand and. You know, we're very precious around our brand, but we we have a framework with which we then hand over to our community to personalise and make it their own. And the, the user-generated content piece has been massive. I mean, the, what's an the example act- of it? Well, I mean, the best example is, you know, the, the men participating in Movember growing moustache, they become walking, talking billboards mm. for 30 days. It's mm. You know, it's the best word of mouth campaign because it's on your face and in your face. But beyond that. Um, and now that we all have platforms um, through our social media channels, mm-hmm. um, you know, creating content that um, talks about the why you're doing it. And Movember's evolved as an organisation and yeah. even our community. It's like, okay, this is fun. This is great doing it for a good cause. And then it's like you get more into it and it's like, okay, this is a really serious cause. And actually, you know, my uncle had prostate cancer or I had a mate that took his life last year. This is really important. And when you come back to relevance, it's, um, you know, we're saying, you know, made a lot of progress, but November's more relevant than ever before because we're losing the battle with the rates of suicide. Mm. We have to bring this issue out of the shadows and get the public talking about it. Twice as many men take their own life than die on the roads in Australia. Wow. You you just think about the amount of money, effort, the government's put into the TAC initiative, and, and yet... That's killing you know fifty percent less men than, than suicide is, and no one is talking about suicide because as a society we don't want to talk about it. Is is there a uh, confusion that you're dealing with in regards to what Movember stands for? Because you're adding these additional causes, it was it, it started off as prostate cancer, and now it's you know gesticular cancer, it's mm-hmm. men's mental health. Yep. Yeah. Um, 
right from the get-go, Movember was always about men's health. And, and we wanted to create an organisation that we were proud to be part of and, and would be part of. And th- normally a charity is singularly focused but in the health space, particularly breast cancer, testicular, skin mm-hmm. cancer, you name it. Um, we're holistically about men's health and you can't have physical health without mental health. 80% of the guys that are diagnosed with prostate or testicular cancer fall into depression. Yep. And so they're intrinsically linked. So linked, to think yeah. about cancer without thinking about your mental health doesn't make sense. And it's also what differentiates it. And I agree with you. It's it's a long story arc. Mm. It's a long story arc to talk about men's health holistically and then get down to the, each of the three issues that we focus on. Mm. We've never taken... We've never taken the easy road. We've never <laughs> taken the shortcuts. And I think about the digital life that we live in and people, you know, here's some life hacks. Here's how to get from A to B quickly. Yeah. That's that's not how you build a brand. Yeah. I, I look at the long cuts and go, to build a brand people love um, takes a long time. Yeah. And it's about consistently um, projecting your brand in a way people would expect. And, and it's also, it's as much as about what you don't do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well said. Tell me about one, one thing I love that is on your, is it on your drawing board you're actually doing is, um, bringing barbers into the conversation. Yeah. Um, so I love again, this idea. Yeah. It's a great idea. It's, you know, barbers right from the get go, um, a huge part of Movember and little backstory here. When we started to grow in November, we looked at who are the connectors in our society that could help spread the word. Bartenders, barbers, um, people that work in the hospitality industry. So we went to them first and told them about November. And particularly barbers, November is about grooming and 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 uh, their barbers are an interesting part of it. And then we looked at Again, the suicide rates and mental health, and 80% of the guys that take their life are not engaged in any sort of professional support. So it's like, how do we reach these guys? Now, on average, we a lot of men go to a barber, and a lot of them go to the barber about every five to six weeks. Mm-hmm. We're in the chair for about half an hour. We're starting to build a relationship with the barber, and we talk about football, we talk about stuff, um, but it's the perfect check-in point, and... Barbers are already having these conversations about, you know, what's going on in your life. Maybe there was, you've lost your job. Maybe there's some financial problems. Maybe your relationship is um, not working out. Barbers, we want to create an online training program where we facilitate and help uh, empower barbers to have informed conversations, how wow. to respond when someone says they're, they're feeling down or depressed or even suicidal. And beyond that, um, and particularly in Australia, these guys are up very close to, to our skin. So train them on how to identify a potential skin cancer and just go, hey, have you had that checked mm. out? And in, in the mental health space, it's, it's sort of the same. It's like, hey, man, it sounds like you're going through a real tough time. Are you all right? Mm-hmm. Um, do you want to talk about it? And, and arm them with where to potentially direct people, but also empower them to have a conversation right then and there. Mate, it's a great idea. And, and the, so the barbers... How do you get to them? How do you actually communicate? There's this online training, guys, if you really want to broaden your horizons and expand your business almost. Um, key to this is building the program with barbers. We don't want this to be a Movember program for barbers. This yeah, needs right. to be a, a program Ongoing. by barbers for barbers. And we'll, we'll take this to the um, to the schools where new barbers are, are educated and trained. So hopefully it's a formal part of their education. Then we'll go to the, the owners of the barber stores and – um, say, hey, we would really love it if you mandated this for all your uh, all your um, barbers to be to this online course. And it's not going to be, you know, it's going to be six, seven hours online, own time. Um, but as I said, these barbers are having these conversations anyway, and they potentially play such an important role in our society. And back in the day, they did. Mm. They, they used to call them barber surgeons in the 16th and 17th century. They did too. Century. Yeah, and that's where the uh, barber <laughs> pole comes from. They I used to it. do bloodletting and pull, pulling of teeth, and and there would be blood-soaked uh, bandages out the front combined with uh, clean Beautiful. bandages, and that's – where the barber pole comes well, from. Well, maybe you'll get to the point where we can start going back to the barbers and claim it as a medical expense uh, going, <laughs> going forward. Get psychiatric consultation. 
get a teeth pulled while you uh, get a haircut. <laughs> hey, Adam, uh, I'd love to say thank you to you and your, your three mates who started Movember. Uh, may it continue for a very long time to come. The concept that you mentioned of service resonates deeply with me and um, having spoken to the, the two blokes who started Orange Sky Laundry only a few weeks ago, a lot of what you say and how you say it uh, is very similar to them and, and that's why I think you're both having such huge success. So uh, best of luck uh, going forward, buddy. Well, thank you for having us, Tim. Well, there you go, team. Adam Garone, co-founder of Movember. Inspiring stuff, huh? If you want to get involved with Movember, then head over now. It's never too late. You can get involved throughout the year. Just grow a mo right now and donate them some money. Head over to movember.com. And by the way, if that conversation triggered anything in you, that may be a cause for concern, then please call Lifeline on 13 11 14. That's in Australia. Or check out the mental health resources over at beyondblue.org.au. Now, coming up, I share my top three attention grabbers from that fireside chat with Adam. Plus, we've got our next instalment of What Have You Got to Lose? But first... Here's a word from two businesses that want to help you build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. Support for this show comes from Key Person of Influence, the world's leading business accelerator program for those wanting to be an industry thought leader. Their five-step KPI method teaches you how to nail your pitch, publish content, productize your offer, raise your profile, and partner with performers. I asked co-founder Glenn Carlson, what's with the pee fetish? (laughs) Oh, yeah, I suppose it is a bit of a fetish, isn't it? But I guess we're just a bit obsessed. You know, fetishes, obsessions, we're, we're, we're just business geeks, mate. We believe there's never been a better time to be an entrepreneur and we're all in. We are just all in. And if we find best practices and ideas as a result of what's working for our clients all around the world, we just want to bring it to people. And so far, the best framework that we've found to be able to do that, to really accelerate that entrepreneurial journey in the shortest time is the five P's. So, mate, get in on the fetish. KPI, where fetishes rule. For a free hard or audio copy of their Amazon bestseller, visit keypersonofinfluence.com forward slash Timbo. Oh, and a little warning. Don't read it before bed. You just won't sleep. Support for this show comes from Web Central, who are pretty damn good at driving traffic and leads your way. Verity Ma, their marketing head honcho, recently drew an interesting analogy for what a website without traffic is like. Your website is a billboard in the desert if you don't have any traffic coming to it. So similar to having an advertisement out in the Sahara Desert, if you don't have any um, traffic driving past it, then people aren't going to know anything about your business. It's a bit of a waste of time. So, yes, it's important and a first step is to get that billboard, which is your website, but past that, you need to actually get found and then from getting found, get leads into your business. So you need to get traffic or cars driving past your website to actually know what you do, what your business offers and how you're different to your competitors because your competitors are out there getting traffic to their website. Hmm. <laughs> Do camels count as traffic? Web Central, helping your website get found fast. Visit webcentral.com.au for exclusive listener offers. Okay, my top three attention grabbers from that chat with Adam Garone, the co-founder of Movember. Attention grabber number one. I like Adam's thinking around going from successful to significant. I reckon this way of thinking can just as easily refer to for-profit businesses as much as it does to not-for-profit businesses. So I think an interesting question to ask is what first step do you need to take in order for you or your business to become more significant in your industry? And if you want a good place to start, I encourage you to grab that Key Person of Influence book because that's kind of what it's all about. Keypersonofinfluence.com forward slash Timbo is where you'll get your free hard copy. Attention grabber number two, reinvention of the Movember brand each year, I think is quite genius, a really smart idea. And it raises the question, when was the last time you gave your visual brand identity a bit of a tickle? 
maybe the time is right to do that right now. Uh, and, hey, we have another spot supporter of this show, Design Crowd. They do that kind of stuff. Uh, attention grabber number three, being in service. I love that mindset. You know, it's another mindset we can all adopt. I like to think I'm in service to small business owners who are wanting to grow their business using effective marketing. And and having that mindset for me certainly makes delivering this kind of information so much more rewarding than just doing it for the money, right? So how can you be more in service and adopt that mindset? That's what grabbed my attention. What grabbed yours? Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 337 and let me know. What have you got to lose? All right, it is time for me to share one simple yet effective marketing idea that you can implement immediately after the show finishes. An idea that won't cost a fortune, if anything, and that might just generate you more awareness, more inquiry, and ultimately, more sales. We love a bit of that. Today's idea is to create a product or service demonstration video. Now, how's this for a stat? Did you know that our brains process visuals 60,000 times faster than text? So with that in mind, not really a surprise that videos have become one of the primary ways for businesses to educate customers on their products or services. Thanks to video hosting sites like YouTube, Vimeo, and the plethora of video creation software tools that now exist, and I'll mention some of those shortly, it's really never been easier for your business to create and share high-quality videos with your prospects online. It just makes sense, right? Well, unfortunately, it's not always easy to, easy to know where to start, and that's why I'm here. So if you want to start experimenting with creating business videos, then start with a demonstration video. Most businesses that have an active presence online have one. Why? Because they're helpful, they're easy to make, and they're great for conversion. So so here's my three simple step process to getting your demonstration video sorted. Number one, get clear on what you want to focus on. Do you want to share a broad overview? or a specific benefit. Step two, write a script. Now, since it's only your voice and not your face that's going to be included, you can read your script word for word. Make sure you put a bit of personality into it, though. Your script should also include cues that help remind you what to show on your screen as you go through the demo. And I would suggest go through your entire demo once or twice before recording. Step three, Use Camtasia, Jing, or Google Hangouts to record your demo. I'll put a link for those in the show notes. Now, when it's ready, upload it to YouTube and share it on your website. And I'll also include an example of a good demo video in the show notes over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 337. So, what have you got to lose? Well, that almost wraps up another episode of the Small Business Big Marketing Show. Coming up next week, we hear from a fellow who is changing the way we shop for clothes. I promise. I promise he'll join us. Now, recently, I chatted with Lizzie Abeg of Byron Bay Business, Spell and the Gypsy Collective. Here's Lizzie talking about an epiphany she had that led to what is now a multi-million dollar fashion empire. I remember waking up the next morning and it's like I just saw this bright light shining all the way to Byron Bay and I rang Isabella and just said, just, do you need a business partner? And it was like, it just connected. She was just like, oh my God, that's exactly what I need. Like she just knew she wasn't getting anywhere with the business on her own. Well, that certainly was the start of an amazing business journey. To hear my full interview with Lizzie, plus hundreds more, head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com or you can subscribe free on iTunes. Hey, I'd also love to hear from you. Email me, feedback, comment, question. My email address, tim at timreid, R-E-I-D dot com dot A-U, or you can hit me up on Twitter over at, at Timbo Reed. Be sure to grab a free hard copy of the Key Person of Influence book over at keypersonofinfluence.com forward slash Timbo, but only 
only if you want to become more visible, valued and connected in your industry. And to avoid your website becoming a billboard in the desert, i.e. getting no traffic, then visit webcentral.com.au forward slash Timbo. You know, the more peeps that get to see your website, uh, the more inquiry you're going to get and probably the more sales. So it would be a good thing to do. Uh, Check out webcentral.com.au forward slash Timbo. If you loved the Small Business Big Marketing Show, pay it forward by letting another business owner know. Until next week, I'm Timbo Reid. Thanks for listening to the Small Business Big Marketing Show. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now.